get started with the presentation. Jessica Tamaro, EXP Realtor, she may do an introduction for herself, but they own 15 um, investment properties. She owns a team um, that she works with for real estate, so she's gonna have some tips and tricks on the real estate side, but also just general investing on the property management company. So she's a busy lady, um, but we're excited to learn from her. So we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks, Jessica. Thank in Nashville as a metro school teacher. I bought a condo on 2nd Avenue at Rutledge House. They were kind of, I would say deteriorating a little bit, but I loved the area and I was a renter there. So I told all the owners, I wanna buy, I wanna buy, I wanna buy. And finally, I saw one of the owners pounding on a door on the third floor saying, pay me rent, mother ever, everything else. And I was like, oh, this is a good time. So when he came down the stairs, I was like, can I buy it? And he said, yes, you can. And he shook my hand. And um, at that time, I um, I didn't really have even a lender. So uh, when I went to the lender, they said they're not more until you need 20% down. And I'm a metro teacher. And I was working at Aubrey on the weekends as a, at the golf course. And I he agreed to sell it to me for 170. And um, this was in 2015. So I. 2004, end of 2014. So I saved and saved. I had to have $38,000. So I saved and saved. I worked five jobs. I was tutoring kids. I was cleaning houses. I was driving Uber and Lyft. And I was working on the weekends at Aubrey. And then I was teaching school for Metro. And I saved my down payment. And I bought it. And I had worked 92 days in a row without a day off. So I decided it was on the news, just like it was this last weekend with Taylor Swift, how much the hotels were. So I went on to Facebook, which you can never do now, but I went on to Facebook um, and went to the CMA Fest fan page and wrote, I just bought a condo downtown. If anybody wants to stay there, let me know and I'll go on vacation that week. <laughs> and this girl from Australia, remember 2015, no one had heard of Airbnb. This girl from Australia messaged me and said, I just booked my flights from Australia. This is a dream trip for me and my sister. I would love to see at your place. So we Skyped, and I had my big Metro computer, and I was taking her around this place, all pixelated, I'm sure. And she said, I love it. I want to stay there. My budget is $3,200. And I said, oh my gosh, yes, it's yours, whatever you want. Um, so she, um, then she said, but the currency, I'm in Australia, you're there. I don't know how to pay you except with PayPal or Airbnb. And I had PayPal and I could have said, okay, I have PayPal, let's just do it that way. But instead I said, what is Airbnb? And she said, you put your place online and people pay you, put pictures of your place online and people pay you to stay there. And again, I'm a teacher, it's coming summer, I've worked my tail off. I said, oh, okay. So I quickly uploaded some pictures. I made an Airbnb listing that said probably almost nothing. And she booked it. And she said, you probably don't get paid until after I come, but it's very secure. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And um, I went to bed, and the next morning I had $8,000 in reservations for the next month. So I um, was like, okay, nobody's moved into my old room because I lived there, right? I had a roommate there. So I told my old roommate, I'll pay you $50 a night to stay here because people are paying me much more to stay in my place. And I just used the Airbnb pricing at that time. So um, that worked out, she was happy I wasn't there all the time and it, I was right there and I did my own cleaning and everything. So that's how I got started. It wasn't that I was in real estate, it wasn't that I was ever planning to be an investor, it was just like communication and you know, being open-minded, I guess. So that's how I started. Um, the HOA shut me down after I made $16,000 and I was okay with it. For that gift, and I didn't know better, um, but I won't do it anymore. Well, then I started telling the story to the other members of the, or the other, you know, people that owned places there, and they were almost all rentals anyway. Um, and that's when I learned that a lot of times, if you're a primary resident buying in a condo building, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes the amount of renters doesn't matter. 
So if you're a pro if you have a client that's a primary, um, buying in some of these um, non warrantable condos, if if your client is a primary, then sometimes that percentage owner occupant doesn't matter. So that's one thing I've learned since then that I didn't know then. I was going to be even getting there was a lot of work because it was almost 50% and my lender at the time um, went and did the research and said, well, if you buy this one, you're gonna flip it to 50-50. So that helped me to get it in the first place. Um, but anyway, so that's how I got started. So then I fell in love with house hacking. I fell in love with real estate. I fell in love with women investing and I wanted to help my friends with that. So I put a camper out at Percy, Percy Warner or Percy Lake and I would stay in my camper and rent my place. Um, and then I tried to rent my camper and I got shut down really quickly and I thought I was going to jail. So don't do that. Okay, group engineer property into the, no, you can't do, don't do a houseboat, don't do a camper, not gonna work. You can't do a camper. If you have a permit, you can't even have a camper on your property um, in Davidson County. Okay, a lot of what I'm gonna say is Davidson County. I do have now, Rentals in three different markets. We're in the top five to ten percent in revenue in each market that we're in. So I'm going to share all kinds of tricks because I started in 2015. I learned a lot along the way, and I don't want everybody to have to learn lessons the way I did, like going and having a court order. So, swipe. Okay, you're good. Yeah. Swipe. What is it? Swipe print. So this is. I'm going to teach you how to make the most from your investment. Because if you're doing it, you probably want to make the most from it. So this is both for you. I know I have some investors in here, and I also have realtors in here. So I'm going to try to talk to both because as a realtor, you're going to be coaching your clients. And as an investor, you're going to probably be wanting to make the most for your money. So where to invest? You want to know what the best market is? You need to know your numbers, and you need to think about the seasonality. And honestly, well, we'll get to all of these. Um, and then you want your listing to stand out. We'll talk about the theme amenities and how to get the guests that you want, as well as how to make the most of your money. Do we have any management companies in here? Okay, good, because I'm an outside managing, so. We all know that certain areas are appreciating more than others. 
okay? The 37217, appreciating. Uh, there's certain zip codes that I really try to talk to them, what's your plan? How long do you wanna have this? You guys are gonna get investors that say, I just wanna do it for two years to have that rental income, I wanna self-manage, and then I wanna sell it because I have that rental history. Personally, I tell my clients, we don't even wanna see the rental history. We wanna see, we wanna buy the ones that are performing the lowest in a building where all the other ones are performing higher. Okay, and that's really hard to get your clients to understand sometimes, but that's what you want. You want the ones that aren't performing because they're the ones that are most likely to sell and you know that you can bring them up because you're gonna have some strategies to help them make the most for them. Um, if you're purchasing for profit, you're gonna to have to tell your clients to be patient. Okay, I saw somebody post in our group somewhere the other day that said, I've got a client that wants a 20% ROI and they're doing a 1031 exchange. And I was like, yeah, so all of us do, yeah. right? Yeah. Call any clients we have that are investors, 20% ROI, they're all gonna buy that. You have to be patient with those and, and finding the right, you know, buying low if you can and finding the right realtor, of course, and that's what I want you guys to be able to say. You've gone to trainings and you understand the market here. Um, SDR Insights is fantastic. and uh, That's a software that I use, and if you need, just call me and I'll help you with that. It's um, about $1,000 a year, but if you and I sit down together, I'm happy to share what's out there. But it basically tells you it's a nationwide data system of all the STRs that have sold and what the, what the revenue is for the last 12 months. So when you log in, it says, here's the top 20 cities to buy in. When you zoom in on Nashville, it shows you, here's the top 5% of performers. Here's the top 10%, 15, 20. It's fantastic for your clients because it shows you if you buy out by the airport, you're not gonna make what you're gonna make by buying in the core of the city. Another 200 grand can be another 100,000 a year. So it's really a powerful tool and you click on that house and it will tell, it shows you exactly what they made on Airbnb and VRBO. It does not have direct booking data. So like on our properties, people can see what we made on Airbnb and VRBO, but it's not a true representation because we get about 15% direct. Um, we want to look at platforms. So determine what an STR can make. You need to look at the platforms it's going to be on. Are you going to be on Airbnb? Are you going to be on VRBO? Click, or, click on the houses around it. If you're doing Center Hill Lake, which is one of my favorite markets, um, don't put that on, keep that close to us. <laughs> but, <laughs> and your clients. But it's one of my favorite markets. Look and click and see. What are they getting per night? How booked is their calendar? You, you have that data in front of you. Um, you don't want their calendar to be full. That means they're underpriced. You don't want it to be completely empty either because that means they're overpriced. So a lot of that information is out there for you guys to figure out. Um, let's see here. And that's, I sorry. Oh, one thing I like to say is that the SCR profitability does not follow traditional real estate trends. Okay? If you're looking at SCR Insights, there's nothing in Brentwood. Brentwood doesn't allow it. Okay? In the, some of these more popular neighborhoods, that's not where people want to stay when they come to Nashville. So just because this, you know, oh, the schools are highly rated, the houses are beautiful, that everything is here, all the community is so strong, this is where everybody wants to live, that's not necessarily true for short-term rentals. It can be completely opposite, okay? Um, so think about that. We're like Gatlinburg. We, Gatlinburg, they, they do really well there. They're a little, they're expensive right now, but again, we probably don't want to live downtown Seasonality. There's less risk associated in areas where the seasons don't vary. If you're in a highly seasonal area, weather and world events can ruin your year. We have a beachfront in um, Panama City that does great, but apparently there's some kind of big continent size the seaweed, seaweed coming seaweed. that could close us down for years. Um, so take that into consideration. If you're in a mountain resort, if you get um, avalanches and things like that and fires <laughs> yes yeah, so yeah, like yeah. you can get knocked out and you know if you have a twenty thousand ten or twenty thousand dollar weekend if you have one of these luxury places that can really affect your profit for the whole year um or close to it so you've got to think about that nashville and um, 
the season, the low season is January, February. If you guys want to come visit Nashville, you can get the Omni for $98 in January. It's, it's super cheap. Um, January, February are starving times in Nashville, but that's it. We, got, we have two months. Other than that, we're pretty full. But you also, and I might talk about this later, but I'll talk about it now. Think about the weekends and the crowds that come to Nashville. Because you're going to get a lot of clients. I want a four bedroom. Four bedroom is the max that the city will permit. Okay, so don't put your clients in a five bedroom. Um, I want a four bedroom because, you know, I think they'll make the most per night. They will on the weekends, but you're not going to get anybody during the week. When we first started out, we really needed to make every dollar we could. So we started a second listing on our four bedroom properties that said that they were two bedrooms so that we could fill in those weekday spots. So we had two different listings going and we would block the two bedroom on the weekends and merge them together and it messed all of our data up so I don't do that anymore because it looked like our occupancy was all terrible. Um, but that is a way, like if you have four bedroom clients and they're saying we're not getting anything during the week, tell them to open a listing that's just one or two bedrooms and they'll start getting weekday bookings. Um, we drop our prices drastically during the week so we might be 1200 on our four bedroom on the weekends and during the week we're like 150 or 200. Um, so it's like a 90% difference. Even, I mean, tonight we're, we've got some I think at $95 tonight. So, um, the Mother's Day weekend is hard. So Nashville is very, um, Nashville's hard because Thanksgiving is hard. People don't come here for Thanksgiving. A lot of people don't come here for Christmas. People don't come on Mother's Day weekend. So we do have those down weekends where people just don't come here, probably much like Vegas, honestly. Yes? Do you control your pricing or do you use the software that you control? That's a great question. So I do use Price Labs, okay. but I manipulate it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yes, so I do Price Labs, but then we up it on um, Saturdays, Fridays and Saturdays. Manually? You can set it to do it always. Okay. So you can go in. If you use, so she's talking about a dynamic price, pricing software. Your clients need to use a dynamic pricing software. I don't think they use Wheelhouse or Price Labs or whatever. They need to use something that knows the pricing. The NFL schedule comes out tonight at seven. As soon as people start searching, the prices are gonna go up because the software knows. It's just like the hotels, it's just like the airlines. And our prices change four times a day. So when people ask us, what's the price? I'm like, I don't know, go to our site and look. You know, if, will you give me a discount? No, we just messed up my pricing software. That's the best excuse for this thing. It messes up all my data. Um, or, yeah, if you come in January, you know, or you come during the week. What I do for friends and family, and this is going to be important, I don't know if it's on here. If you guys get one of these, you're going to have to tell your friends and family no. Because they want 4th of July, they want Memorial Day, they want all your big weekends. You have to tell them no. So what we say is you can stay for free during the week. But our weekends, we have to come. Uh, I have a pool property. I get people, no, my kid's birthday on Saturday. And I'm like, do you want to pay $5,000 for a birthday party? Like, no. <laughs> like, sorry. Um, but you can come for free during the week. So it's just, it's, and that's hard to say that to friends. I mean, we often let friends stay at our house for free because, um, you know, or other places for free. If it's uh, like something that we don't, we're not going to rent out. Okay, so if that makes sense. So you can stay in my apartment for free while I go to the, you know, my boat for the weekend or whatever, but otherwise you're gonna have to pay for the weekend. So it was tough and Taylor Swift weekend was tough because we had a lot of people like, I don't have anywhere to stay and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, let's see here. The risk comes with the reward. So if you're in a season, uh, if you're in a high season place, like. Colorado, you're going to be able to get like crazy amounts. I don't know if you guys have priced houses in Michigan. We went to Lake Michigan last year. It was twenty thousand a week, probably the average house. Twenty thousand a week to go on the lake in the summer. Think of their season. It's short. It's a very short season, and everybody wants to go there. People from Chicago, people from. So we end up finding a place for twelve thousand. Okay, so we were wasn't the nicest, but it was perfect for what we needed. And we were splitting in a lot of ways, and we'll talk about that too. <laughs> convention centers are important. Our national condos near the convention center, they stay booked midweek because of the con convention business. 
Also, hotels um, don't scare me. I feel like hotels advertise, they bring in business. If you stay at the hotel for a convention, then you usually get a discount, but the vendors don't always. So the vendors will end up staying in the Airbnbs and we get things like that all the time. So being near a convention center is important. And I haven't added this yet either, but I learned in one of the recent conferences I went to, to invest in small towns that don't have hotels because you get people coming for funerals and things like that. So I think of Smithville and um, our place at Center Hill Lake, and we've had several families come and book it last minute during the week for funerals because the hotels there, there's not many, and the ones that are, aren't, you know, maybe what they wanted to stay at. So also, if you're really, especially in a small town, um, I have heard this too, you can call because you'll see like um, construction companies staying at the small hotels. They're never on the truck. So you can call them and say, hey, I see, I see that you guys are at this hotel Monday through Thursday every week. Can I work out a deal with you and you guys can come to the house and the guys can grill out and they can, so you guys can capture business that way too. So think about what's going on if you're staying at the hotels and the same kind of small hotel, not a business because that could be a market that you want to buy in. But that's just an idea to keep your place closed. You want to stand out against the competition? Um, it's not like it was anymore, or like it used to be. When I started this, after I bought my first condo, I went ahead and bought another house. And I literally went on Facebook and said, hey, is anybody giving anything <coughs> away? Silverware, dishes, towels. I took whatever I could get, my beds. I got everything off the marketplace or from friends. Everything to furnish my place, and I did great. Those days are over. They're over. The competition is too thin. 54% of Airbnbs have been added since 2020. 54%. <coughs> so the competition is out there. So you need to have them really um, themed and current and, and drawing people in. So I'm huge on theming because I worked for Marriott for 19 years. They're very big on consistency. They want if you stay at the JW here, they want it to look like the JW in Phoenix, the JW in Orlando. You don't have to do that with Airbnbs. You can have you can have a lot of fun with them. So theme them. We have um, several of ours are we do a lot of pink uh, because I like the bachelorette parties. I like when people come in as a group. I like when people pay separately, so the sticker shock is not that big of a deal. If you guys think about it, girls trip. If I said right now, hey girls, let's go to Scott's cell for the weekend, it's $300 a person. How many of you guys would say, would consider it? Okay, let's but, go. <laughs> but if you're planning a trip with your family to go to Scottsdale, $3,600 for a house might have you second guessing if you're the only person paying. And your expectations might change. Typically when we get groups of friends, we get less complaints things like that. Now at the lake, at our chalet, it's all families. And so we cater to the families and things like that. But think about who you want your people to be as well. And your clients need to think about that too. Do they really want, we have um, a condo on Dickerson Road, three story flat rooftop condo. And we, it has open stairs, so we don't allow families there. Okay, because of the open stairs. But there's more reasons than that, if you think about it. Would a family feel comfortable there? The road is busy. You'll see things that are more adult-like. So you can kind of control your reviews. It's true, right? Yes. But you can control your reviews by doing that. Now, um, if we got safety concerns, things like that, maybe we would take the pink out and maybe we would do other colors there, and, you know, things like that to attract a different crowd. So you can control that and your Clients can control that if they think about their avatar. Who, are you, who do you want to attract? Do you want to attract kids? Then put all kid things in there. Do you want to attract groups of bachelors? Then call it the outlaw. You know, put up artwork of Johnny Cash getting arrested. You know, things like that. <laughs> it's true though. Like, wherever you're at, yes. <clears throat> Sorry, more questions. Um, how do you mitigate the absolute chaos that comes along with bachelor and bachelor parties? So, we have cameras and we have um, you notify the noise aware. They will be recorded in, in the public area. You have to, yes. Okay. 
Yeah. Yes. So we have cameras at our doors, front doors, and then we have noise aware, and that all has to be disclosed before you book. Okay. So noise aware um, records the decibel levels. <laughs> it doesn't record the conversations, but it records the decibel levels. So if they get too loud, we get a warning. And there's actually a newer one now that has smoke aware in it, and it tells you what they're smoking. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. So um, and it's like. In our rules, it says we don't care what you smoke, just smoke it outside. But um, <laughs> some people don't, and it goes off inside the house, which ours don't do. But I wish that it did an alarm inside to warn them. Yes. Quick story. Um, I don't have short-term rentals anymore, but I used to back in the days where there wasn't so so many regulations, and I didn't wasn't very good with the rules. It was gonna be a, a, a group of few people coming to a wedding. Well, the whole party wedding transfer into the backyards. There were at least 60 bottles of champagne, so much traffic. I mean, they cleaned as much as they can, but yeah, to your point, it's, it's, it's sticky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you just have a really big cleaning fee on those rentals that you are trying to bring in these party people? Or what have you found? So that? what we say, are, one of the things that we say in our listing is something like, before booking, please consider every member of your party <laughs> because you're the one responsible. And the reason I like bachelorettes is, and I have to be careful what I say because I had to go through a discrimination training with Airbnb because I put no bachelor parties. Okay. I'm serious. So like, you have to be careful. So now our listing says, if you're booking for a bachelor or a bachelorette party, you can call us in advance. You need to let us know in advance. So if a bachelor party books and I'm concerned, then I can say they didn't follow the rules already, <laughs> so then they'll cancel them. But um, that's one thing I do, and then I let them know that we have the cameras. Also, Nashville law states that you can't have more than the occupied number of people on your permit on the property at any time. So I let them know that too. Um, and we have a renter agreement as well. So, okay, good question. Yes, we do a renter agreement as well. And even though, um, if you have Airbnb, go ahead and get a software that does the renter agreement, because if you have an insurance claim, that's the first thing the insurance is gonna ask for. Okay. No. Yes. Do you also have a security deposit? I do a security deposit as well, but it's small. Hopefully, I can. Okay. So we like the theme. Um, we've got one right now that we're doing retro pool um, amenities that exceed expectations. If you can do a hot tub or a pool, do it. If you do a, a swim spa, do it. A swim spa is awesome because they drop it in one day, and now you have a heated pool, and you can advertise a heated. So if you could do that, we put a swim spa in our, our um, a hot tub at our Center Hill Lake property this year, and our January and February bookings were almost triple. So the hot tubs matter, and it's not just people searching for a hot tub, it's because Airbnb boosts you. If you have a hot tub or a pool, because they want people to go on the site and book, and so they want to show amenities that hotels can't offer, you know, a private hot tub. So um, I definitely bank on those amenities. And once you get the guests, you want to wow them. So now we're doing um, mimosas, and we do a whole um, thing on our door. And you might see it in here. That You know those shoe, the clear plastic shoe racks that hang on the back of your doors? We have those on all of our properties, and they're all full. So we have sunscreen, bike spray, umbrellas, band-aids, tampons, toothbrushes, toothpaste, razors, shaving cream. All that stuff is there, and it's all free. And people love it. Even if they don't use it, they comment on it. It's our number one thing that you can comment on. We also now leave a handwritten note um, and a bottle of champagne with an orange juice. So the champagne was cool. It was, a, it was, you know, and it's a gift from me as a realtor. It's not a gift from the rental company. Okay, and it, um, the orange juice makes the difference. The champagne, people were like, thank you. You leave a mimosa, people are wow. Okay, <laughs> 75 cent champagne or or juice made a difference. Um, okay, so here's some of our themes. So um, this one is we've got Jenny Vacations, we've got a mural here. Um, that's one of our downtown townhouses. And then here's another one, it's the Shania, Let's Go Girls. Um, and then this is the one I originally bought. I had the wood put in later. Um, so this was my first one. Back to the HOA. We had a meeting, we voted, the HOA voted, the owners 
those 41 units in that place, we voted, 34 people voted, it was 33 to one. Okay, so I think we're pretty safe. Um, oh, we already talked a lot about the amenities. Fire and water features are gonna get you the most clicks. <coughs> so if you have, even if it's a tabletop fire pit, you know, the little kids that I was talking about, that if you've got any water features, make those your first pictures. Um, and then offering the hot tubs, swimming pools. One of the conferences I said that I went to, they said the two categories that are going to survive the best are the ones that have um, proximity and views. The proximity and views, I would definitely concentrate on those. Um, we do record players. We have Miss Pac Man. We don't do Ski Ball anymore, so don't do that one um, because people tore it up and it's expensive to fix. Um, oversized chess. Um, ping pong is great. Ping pong is cheap. Buy the outdoor ping pong tables from Costco. They're like three thousand dollars because they're gonna play beer pong on it no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> so just get the outdoor one. And um, we have a VHS library and our retro one. People like that. And um, so saunas, bowling, all the things. If you can do it, do it. We don't do saunas and bowling, but the ones that do are really killing it. So I told you all the things we offer. Um, we do K-Cups and drip coffee, and we provide it. Um, we also do oatmeal, and people love that oatmeal. So inexpensive, it's like $6 for the box at Costco of the little oatmeal packets. And you put those in there, and people are like, thank you so much, we didn't have to go and get groceries first thing in the morning. Um, we do spices, we, all, we do the whole thing in trash bags, paper towels. We're not one of those rentals where you just get a starter pack.
but it can, for the most part, be done remotely at software and phone call. Okay. Um, your cleaner's goal is you have to pay your cleaner more than you pay anybody else. Yeah. I mean, more than anybody else will pay them. If you get it. Um, and it, ta it takes some time to go through cleaners, and it's frustrating. But we're in a good place right now with ours. We have a great one at Center of the Lake. We have a great one in Florida that moves to the complex. She will have heard us there. The one at Center of the Lake, she went into the car driver. choosing them based on percentage of revenue. And you can use SPR insights in the ARDNA to see who's managing those properties. Over here, I'm having better luck. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here's our software stack. I'm going to try to go fast. I'm happy to share this with you guys later, but these are the softwares we use. There's alternatives to all these that are probably just as great. Um, but we use OwnerRes and price up. OwnerRes also does cool things. So if there's like a vacant night in between, we don't typically do one night bookings, but it'll send an email and say, um, the night after your stay is available, would you like to book it for 50% off? The night before your stay is available, would you like to book it for 50% off? And we get people every month that book it, so it more than pays for itself, the software. And we pay, I think it's two ten a month for 15 properties. It's well worth it. Uh, we use price ups for our pricing. Hospitable does auto messaging within Airbnb, so it sends the Airbnb message thread. Um, Rank Freeze tells you where you're appearing um, on Airbnb, and it also tells you how that guest rated other people. So if you get a guest that's a king of the booty, you can look up and be like, they gave these people three stars, they gave these people three stars, they gave, you know, or you can be like, they've stayed five places, they've given everybody five stars, they're, you know, they're probably. Um, so I like that. You can kind of sneak in, you know, snoop on people. The noise aware we talked about, ring at the front door. Brevo's our lock software. Um, it's $12 a month. It integrates with our owner res, and it changes the codes to everybody's phone number. Last four of your phone number. You don't find them out until um, the day before your booking. But last four of your phone number will be your door number, and it does not work until check in time. So we don't have to worry about them coming in early or on top of other guests because people will fly in at 7 and go to the place at 8 a.m. when there's still people there checking out at 11. Um, but it won't let them in, and um, it also does not um, work if they didn't sign the rental agreement. So it's really great. It's only $12 a month per house for the uh, for the Brevo. Um, we talked a lot about those. So those are some of the things that we use. And we already talked a lot about the cameras and everything. Here's this other one. Please um, be clear in your description about your expectations. Please read the entire description prior to booking. Um, noise ordinance are strictly enforced. Consider each member of your party prior to booking. So that's one thing that we do. Please read the entire description before booking because people don't. Another tip I didn't have on here is um, in your photos, you can do five star reviews because people will look at your, they'll either read the description or they'll look at the photos. They're probably not doing both. So if you put your, Five star reviews in your photos. That's just more it takes a man to look with you. So we had a great time, you know, in this kitchen, whatever. Um, we 
kitchen is better than saying a balloon stocked kitchen. Um, and we always ask what brings them to the area so we know why they're coming. Yes. Do you feel like these are right? I have touch day, but they made their own, right? We don't use our touch day. Not really. Share the local regulations and age restrictions in your listing and also the law about like not being about capacity. Because if they know it's illegal, they're probably a little more serious about it. I would hope so. I would hope anyway. Um, am I doing it wrong? Yeah, oh. yeah. No, 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 Okay. Thank you. 